can you get something back if it's been stolen by the fairies? Well, Dag to Yvokas Fulcher. Hi, hello and welcome. John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School. And that is the Kester question that I'm sharing with you today because I am studying the National Folklore Collection of Ireland's schools collection specifically, where we're talking about fairy magic, fairy abduction, fairy creatures. And there are many tales where property, cattle, people are stolen by the fairies. So is it possible to get them back? Well, I have an, a lovely story that I thought I'd share with you there today. This one comes from Jared Walsh, who got it from Michael Walsh in Gallows Hill in County Mayo. These stories are recorded between 1936 and 1939, um, and they were done in in conjunction with the National Folklore Collection, the, the, the National Teachers Union, and the Board of Education. So kids were sent home with copy books to ask for these old stories, old customs, old kind of mythology, and it is collated, and that's why we have that information now, almost like, you know, 100 years later, which is fascinating to even to think about that. But this story is about a man and his cow, and the cow gets stolen by the fairies. So as the story goes, Michael tells it to Jared, there was once a man who only had one cow. The cow had a calf. After, the ca after that, the cow died, but the calf lived. Then the man had no milk to give to the calf. He was very troubled about what he would do with him, and so he put him away, put the calf away in a place to die. It was about a week after that that the man went to see if the calf were dead. But instead of being dead, he found that it was improving. One of the neighbours told the man that he was up late last night and he saw the cow coming and giving milk to the calf. The man said, if that be the truth, I will wait up tonight and see if she will come. He waited up that night until the cow came. He watched her feeding her calf. He then twisted her tail around his hand. As he did so, the cow made off, dragging the man behind her. They went along until they came to a fort and then they went into it. Inside the fort was a beautiful house. The man had a hazel stick with him. And when the fairies went taking to take the cow from him, he hit them with it. And as soon as he did, he got back his cow and went home a happy man. So, as I said, this was recorded in 1930, between 1936 and 1939 and in Gallows Hill in County Mayo in Ireland. It is a story about people losing property and calf cows back in like those times, pre-war and all the rest of it, even before that, into the famine times in nineteen in 1845 to 1850, cows were very, very fucking important to people living in the island. It wasn't just a symbol of status or wealth. In most cases, given the way Ireland had been partitioned by its colonizing landlords, the land in which a person would have would maybe be about an acre. They'd have to grow a whole lot of crops, crops to pay their rent to the landlord. And if they were fortunate, they might be able to keep a cow. And so have, losing a cow was actually pretty fucking dire to a, a family situation like that. So many stories there are about, again, fairies causing problems with it, but then also fairies treated with respect, bringing abundance and bringing fortune in, in balance or in counterbalance to it. So it... It's interesting how many of these stories do cover and talk about these interactions with the other crowd. But for all of that, they're never presented as benevolence. They're never presented as caring for humans or like nature spirits looking after humanity or looking after the, nat the natural beauty of our island. They are literally another group of people in another world, a parallel world to ours, which is referred to as on sale, Ella, the other life. And you might find nice ones, you might find absolute fuckers who are going to cause you a problem. And so that's why it's great to see these stories and great to kind of understand that for hundreds of years, there has been this understood relationship or easy peace between our crowd and their crowd. But at no point should a person ever presume that they have the blessings of the other crowd or that they are 100% safe from the other crowd, as we can see in this story. So 
Thank you very much for being here. Hopefully you found that interesting. We have a lot more content on the Irish Pagan School about fairies, about the other crowd, about where all this lore kind of comes from. There's a, a fantastic class on the use of archives, Ireland's archives. So you can look up this content yourself or you can actually look up the, your ancestral roots and and information about where you come from or where your ancestors may have come from in Ireland. So there's a whole lot of content that we have in the Irish Pagan School. If you can't afford to take a class, we got you covered as well. Go to irishpagan.school forward slash free for years worth of free resources, classes, audio recordings, podcasts, videos. We have a whole lot of content available for you there. If you're specifically interested in ancestry, irishpagan.school forward slash roots. And that can give you uh, some stepping stones to get yourself start started in figuring out where you need to go and how you need to figure things for yourself. As ever, Gaurav Mahaga, thank you for being with us here today. And until next time, look after yourself and slán. Goodbye. <laughs>